uh, good morning. Uh, today we'll be start, start We will be having a surgical audit presentation uh, from Avangur Hospital. Uh, three units will present their uh, audit. Uh, first unit, unit one, audit will be presented by Dr. Prashinjit Basu. Prashinjit, you can share your screen and start. Good morning, our respected uh, teachers and uh, our batchmates. I'm Dr. Prashinjit Gosu. I'm going to present surgical audit for May 2023 for uh, Unit 1, which is under Dr. A.K. Kaur and Kuntal Chakravarti. Summary, total OPD test, we have 9, total admission day 10, total OPD patient 1188, old 560 and new 628. Total number of elective OT days 9, total time in OT, uh, lab 32 hours 30 minutes, uh, 14 hours and 30 minutes, total number of minor OT days 10, and total number of mortality 1. Audit May 23, we have, they summary, elective admission we have 62, emergency admission 23, elective operation 39, emergency operation 9, mortality 1 and morbidity 1. In elective admission, uh, hepatobiliary and pancreatic splenic surgery. Uh, to me for patients. In regional cases, we have recurrent appendicitis for which we open appendicectomy in three cases. And laparoscopic appendicectomy for two cases. Prashnir, sound is breaking. Sound is breaking. You can take the keep the video off. Sound is breaking. In hernia and groin surgery, ventral hernia with mesh hernia first year for three cases. Incisional hernia, uh, we have mesh hernioplasty for one case. And inguinal hernia, uh, we have eight cases for which we did like instant tension free mesh repair for eight cases. And a single case of uh, vaginal hydrocele for which we did reversion of sac. In miscellaneous cases, we have exploration of sinus tag in anterior abdominal ward. There are five cases of circumcision and a great saphenous vein stripping and flush ligation in a case of varicose vein and exploratory laparotomy followed by double barrel stoma. Uh, excision of pyogenic granuloma, four cases, lipoma excision, six, jet exposure in a case of ingrowing toenail paranoia, six cases, severe cyst excision, 14 cases, excision of cone, five cases, and true cut biopsy from breast lump, four, IND in a case of abscess, six cases, and cyst aspiration and international injection triamnosin in three cases. And foam sclerotherapy with polydocanol one cases, total 49. We have single morbidity single case of morbidity and uh, mortality morbidity of 55 year male patient presented with left inguinal hernia, which is directed and complete in nature. Like instant tension free mesh hernioplasty done. Patient complaining of pain from POD on. We manage conservatively and patient discharge on POD3 after successful conservative treatment. In mortality, 
we have a 40 year a, a year old female presented with uterine perforation and intestinal perforation with history of dnc which is done outside patient is in severe shock after initial resuscitation patient undergo exploratory laboratory with total hysterectomy and primary resection anastomosis and on POD0, patient is lifted in CCU to persistent hypoxia. POD3 and POD2 conservative management given. On from POD4, fecal and gastric content are coming from drain. POD5, we take the pain under our unit and plan for a re-exploration prior to that. CCT done to confirm the failure of primary anastomosis. On POD6, we re-explore the patient and resection and double barrel ileostomy done. POD is zero of re-exploration patient is shifted to CSU for management of hypoxia and persistent shock. On POD one drain output is 500 ml, NGS 200 ml, but patient still is in shock with persistent low mean arterial pressure and unstable vitals. POD two patient is intubated and put on invasive ventilation. On POD3, patient is on cardiac CPR given, but ROC cannot be achieved when patient succumb to death. Was the surgeon in this case? Uh, Dr. E.K. Korsar and uh, Dr. Uh, Acharjo uh, from uh, Gaini. Uh, then uh, you, you operated this patient next morning? Uh, yes, sir. It is presented in Gaini department, labor room. Uh, we uh, we get call uh, call book from uh, Gaini and we attended the patient in uh, Gaini OT and uh, we performed the, the... the. You see, this is this is what we have discussed time and again, and you have learned by your experience that patient who is in septic yes. shock, patient who is yes, having yes, such amount of fecal contamination, a primary anastomosis is undesirable. We we don't yes. do that. That what we have learned over years. So this, yes. this patient should have a, a, a stoma being made at the first go. And I yes. don't understand why the uh, gynecologist decided to hysterectomy for a, a DNC uterine perforation. More so when the patient is in shock. Was the uterine, uterine perforation very large one which is not repairable? Uh, yes, sir, it is quite large. So they decided to... And the patient was also bleeding? attend... Was it, uh, was it bleeding? Yes, was it actively uh, bleeding? Yes, sir. It is quite large and bleeding. No, no. You see, you see, the point is we have lost the patient. Now we have to yes, analyze sir. what else we could have done for this patient. That patient could have been salvaged. You see, a living problem is better than a dead one. This yes, patient sir. had septic shock. Patient has fecal peritonitis. And yes, you have re revived the patient. And... Poster period. So yes. the first uh, surgery, uh, if you would have done a stoma, maybe that hysterectomy part they've taken care of. But I still I have a reservation to say that uh, in this situation, I will not consider doing it. We have seen number of such patients. We have seen number of such patients with uterine perforation and then septic peritonitis. The simple thing is just do a uh, uterine repair. You see, uterine repair is not going to give way. If you don't give away, your intestinal resumes will not take. So keep in mind that subsequently when you find such patient, it is wise to do a stoma rather than doing a primary anastomosis. Yes, sir. And uh, morbidity, you said pain. Every patient has pain. Why do you keep pain as a morbidity? I don't so understand. It is, it is your first uh, patient does not have pain? So it is your quite severe. And from... Sir, on POD1, it is quite severe. So, uh, so that we postpone so the... Yes, sir. No, no, no. Why? But I don't understand. Why do you put simple pain as morbidity? Then every patient should have uh, uh, pain. Was this pain because of a fluid collection or anything uh, related to uh, a surgical technique which resulted in hematoma? Nothing like that. No, sir. There is no such complication. So but that, it that, is... That, this is not exactly a morbidity. Mobility means when he is deviating from your usual post-op course. Some patient may have little more pain. Okay, there are a lot of yeah. cause for pain. So mobility, I don't think is a. Okay, sir. Okay, we can pass on to the next. You need two. Mehul. Yes, sir. Class. 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 
Good morning, respected teachers and seniors. I'm uh, Dr. Mehul Patel. I'll be presenting surgical audit for May 2023, uh, Unit 2 General Surgery. Total OPD days 9. Total number of OPD patients 85. Uh, total OPD patients 70. And total OPD patients 315. Total number of elective OT days were 9. Total time planned in OT, OT hours 20 minutes. Uh, total number of minor OT days 11. Total number of mortalities 5. Total number of morbidities 2. Total elective admissions 46. Total emergency admissions 32. Total elective operations 41. Total emergency operations 23. Minor operations 21. Mortality 5 and morbidity 2. In hepatobiliary and pancreatic and splenic surgeries, uh, 17 cases of chronic calculus cholecystitis for which a laparoscopy uh, cholecystectomy was done. And, slide, uh, slide is not changing. Slide is not changing. We will please change your slides and make it full screen. Please go to slideshow. Is it is it visible now? Uh, slides has changed, but please go to slideshow if possible. It's in slideshow only. Okay, okay. Yeah, now it's in slideshow. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, 17 ca uh, cases of uh, chronic calculus cholecystitis for which uh, laparoscopic cholecystectomy was done and two cases of chronic calculus cholecystitis for which open cholecystectomy was done. In uh, gastrointestinal and perianal surgeries, uh, two cases were anal fissure for which uh, lateral anal sphincterotomy was done. One case of fistula for electomy was done. One case of internal hemorrhoids for which hemorrhoidectomy was done. Three cases of recurrent appendicitis for which lap appendectomy was done. And one case of recurrent appendicitis for which open appendectomy was done. <clears throat> In hernia and groin surgeries, three cases of unilateral inguinal hernia for which step was done. Two cases of unilateral inguinal hernia for which herniorephy was done. Four uh, uh, cases of inguinal hernia for which hernioplasty was done. One case of ventral hernia for which uh, an, uh, for which hernioplasty was done. One case of umbilical hernia for which anatomical repair was done. Two cases of hydrocele for which jabulase procedure was done. And one of, uh, case of uh, phimosis for which circumcision was done. In emergency operations, uh, two cases of perforative peritonitis for which uh, exploratory laparotomy with Graham's patch repair was done. Two cases of obstructed inguinal hernia for which herniorephy was done. <clears throat> Debridement was done for foot also. Uh, one case of gluteal abscess for which ID was done. One case of uh, perianal, three cases of perianal abscess for which uh, incision and drainage was done. And one case of neck abscess for which incision and drainage was done. <clears throat> uh, two cases of acute gastrointestinal pancreatitis were managed conservatively. Four cases of acute calculus cholecystitis were managed conservatively. Six cases of acute appendicitis for which appendectomy was done. Three cases of subacute intestinal obstruction, which were managed conservatively. One case of foot cellulitis with compartment syndrome, uh, for which fasciotomy was done. Uh, <clears throat> three cases of uh, diabetic foot ulcer, for which debridement and dressing was done. One case of neck carbuncle, for which uh, wide local excision was done. And one case of, uh, uh, it's not burst abdomen, it's a uh, wound day sensor, for which repair was done. Uh, and total uh, 19 uh, minor which is excision of excision of excision of skin tag on excision excision of stand tract and lymph node excision. Okay, pass on to the next minor person need not discuss. Pass on to next. Yes. <laughs> two case two morbidities and five mortalities. Mortality one. A 52 year old male came to the ER with features of perforative peritonitis, uh, known case of hypertension, ischemic heart disease, uh, COPD, and a chronic smoker with history of six days. Uh, he was resuscitated and exploratory laparotomy was done. A heel gastric perfor uh, perforation was identified. Thorough wash was given and the abdomen was closed in less after proper hemostasis. On POD1, he complained of chest heaviness and cuff with ABG showing metabolic acidosis and was immediately shifted to CCU. 
SPO2 was 85%, bilateral crafts were positive, drop, uh, drop, drop T was negative, uh, NT Pro BNP was uh, 1,281. HRPM drain showed 600 ml of VLS output and uh, WBC count of 29,000. On purity 2, he was under uh, HFNO and uh, HRPM drain was 500 ml with a count of 25,000. In the next three post-operative days, his blood parameters gradually improved and he was shifted to face mask, face mask with uh, 8 liters of moist O2 with regular breathing exercise which was continued every day. HRPM drain was about 50 ml in 24 hours. On POD6, he again developed sudden shortness of breath and bleeding from uh, per rectum and mouth and hypertension. ABG showed metabolic acidosis, INR was 3, PT, APTT was raised, platelet count was 25,000, he was put on NORAD support. In the next three post-operative days, multiple units of whole blood and uh, fresh frozen plasma was transfused along with other necessary management. But the patient was not responding to the treatment and uh, not responding to treatment with uh, added features of AKI. He was uh, intubated on POD9. On POD10, the patient succumbed to death due to septic shock and multi-organ failure. Mortality 2. 75-year-old male was referred from medicine ward with the radiological evidence showing a uh, multiple liver cystic swelling with history of five days. On examination, the abdomen was tensed, red, blanching was present, and there was history of fever. The patient was immediately transferred to our side and was planned for USG-guided pigtail catheter. USG-guided pigtail catheter could not be done as the anterior swelling was ruptured and there was deep-seated posterior uh, cavity which uh, could not be reached through pigtail, so the abscess was locally drained and a uh, corrugated drain sheet was placed in situ. On POD1, the patient was doing well, was started on higher antibiotics and oxygen support. Alternate day dressing was done and the count gradually decreased from 30,000 to 16,000 in 7 days, but could not maintain oxygen saturation without face marks uh, at uh, 6 liters per minute. Right. On POD9, the patient developed sudden hypertension and respiratory distress. ABG showed metabolic acidosis. Patient was shifted to C uh, CCU and was started on HFNO and NORAD support. On POD10, he was intubated. The patient then did not respond to the treatment and succumbed to death due to septic shock. Mortality 3. A 52-year-old male came to the ER with features of cellulitis and compartment syndrome of left hand. He had a history of polytrauma with fracture of L1, L2 vertebra and left radius and left ulna with uncontrolled diabetes and hypertension. Fasciotomy was done. On POD1, patient was doing well with a count of 24,500. Uh, regular dressing was done every alternate days. He was put on oxygen support with nasal cannula at 2 liters per minute as his saturation was not being maintained on Bumap uh, uh, with, with decreasing count. On POD5, patient developed sudden respiratory distress with hypertension. AVG showed metabolic acidosis, was shifted to CCU and intubated and put on NORAD support. Patient uh, did not respond to the treatment and succumbed to their due to acidosis following severe inflammatory response in room. Mortality 4, a 85-year-old lady presented to the ER with features of subacute intestinal obstruction and shock with history of 4 days and high, uh, with hypertension and SPO2 of 87%. The patient was resuscitated and was planned for CCT whole abdomen. Routine blood investigation showed uh, dyselectrolytemia and uh, was being managed conservatively, WBC count of 17,000. On day three, patient developed sudden chest tightness and respiratory distress. Drop T came out to be positive. The patient was uh, shifted to CCU and was tried to resuscitate, but the patient did not respond to treatment and succumbed to death due to acute cardiac injury. Mortality 5, a 66-year-old gentleman present to the ER with features of subacute intestinal obstruction and shock, non-diabetic and hypertensive, with two such episodes in the past five years. The patient was initially resuscitated but was not responding. The patient was immediately shifted to CCU. AB showed severe metabolic acidosis, dyselectrolytemia. He was put on NORAD support and intubated. Patient did not respond to trigger and succumbed to death. Morbidity 1, a 66-year-old male was admitted for inguinal mesh infection. Mesh was extracted and anatomical repair was done. The recovery was uneventful up to POD4 with regular dressing being done every day. On POD5, there was first discharge from the wound side and with some gaping of wound uh, at the distal end of the wound. On POD7, a part of mesh was being seen from the distal end of the wound, which was the source of infection that was locally extracted and dressing with cadmium powder was started. 
the wound is healing well now and the patient is being planned for secondary surgery. Morbidity 2, a 40-year-old male was planned for open cholecystectomy. Intraop calus was uh, uh, densely added with short CBD and additions of the ascending colon. In adverse injury to the CBD and serosa of the ascending colon occurred. Primary repair of the serosa was done in one layer with vicryl. Vicryl was done. <clears throat> Cholidogo duodenostomy was done. Two 32 French ADK uh, and in HRPM and pelvis were placed. Post operative day one, the patient was clinically doing well. HRPM drain was 600 ml, bilious output. Post operative day two, patient developed jaundice. In subsequent days, the jaundice decreased and the drain outputs were decreased to less than 25 ml. Alternate day uh, dressing was done. The patient was recovering well up till uh, POD 10. There was uh, on POD 10, there was some dis uh, serous discharge from the wound side, which was being managed with regular dressing. On POD 14, he developed a partial wound dehiscence. On POD 15, the wound was re explored and uh, secondary suturing was done, followed by regular dressing. The recovery was uneventful uh, with normal LFT and the patient was discharged on POD 5. Thank you, sir. Uh, there are a lot of mortalities, but I agree that most of the patients are uh, elderly and sick. What about the first patient? You said a pectic perforation. Was it a gastric, large gastric perforation? Sir, it was a gastric perforation, which was... Uh, and, uh, and how, do, how do you explain uh, 600 ml of uh, uh, drain fluid on first day, second day, 500 ml, and then subsequently dropped and patient deteriorated? Uh, was, was, could, the, could the perforation be closed uh, satisfactorily? Sir, the, uh, um, the perforation was uh, already uh, sealed with momentum and uh, uh, thorough uh, exploration was done. Uh, but uh, uh, we couldn't uh, find any definitive uh, perforation or in the gastric. How do you mark it as a large gastric perforation? It's if you not find a perforation at all, which is sealed. Uh, then, it... then you see, on the first post-op day, the patient is draining 500 ml. Indicates that something uh, else is uh, somewhere else. And then, when the drain has gone down, one has to keep in mind that drain might be blocked, and then patient started deteriorating. You see, yes, sir. if you have not found this definite perforation, have you explored the posterior wall by opening the laser sac? Yes, uh, yes, sir. It was yes, sir. explored, sir. So, have you uh, explored the whole small gut? So, uh, the small gut was also explored, sir. Did you not find a perforation? No, sir. Uh, uh, sir, good morning, sir. Yes. Sir, so, sir, we we explored the whole uh, abdomen thoroughly, sir. Uh, on the uh, on the stomach, sir, on the anterior wall, there was an area where we, sir, so since the patient's history was also of six days old, there was an area where we could see that a uh, patch of momentum was adherent, and we tried okay. to give a thorough wash to see it was just flakes or if it would just come off. But sir, that did not happen. Sir, so, postoperatively, uh, the patient was for one day in the ward. When the uh, output was very high in the drain, sir, so we suspected that we might have missed something and we had, uh, uh, by the second and the third day, when the output was still a little high, uh, we thought we'd re-explore, sir. But, sir, the overall condition of the patient, uh, sir, clinically, the patient was put on HFNO and his uh, ejection fraction was also around 32%. But sir, the patient was uh, was doing incentive spirometry. Uh, we had initially kept the patient NPM and subsequently the drain output slowly reduced. Uh, but sir, later on, as uh, with time, sir, the respiratory complications uh, did not allow us to re-explore the patient, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, in, in, the, in this uh, colostomy patient, why did you do a colostomy? Why is the decision for colostomy made? Sir, uh, the uh, the CBD uh, injury, sir, it occurred, sir, uh, around the just uh, uh, below the hilum, sir. So, so, so the, the CBD injury was the CBD dilated. So CBD was uh, not that dilated. So if small, it's not dilated, then colonoscopy is not ideal procedure. So colonoscopy when the CBD is dilated, otherwise in a bilateral injury. If at all you need to do, simple thing would have been a repair of a tree tube or you could have done a colloquial So the actually, sir, uh, <clears throat> the, the, sir, consultants uh, thought that this would be the best. Uh, no, that is not the best. To proceed, sir. Okay. Not a rise there in the meeting, no. 
Good morning, sir. I am here, uh, Dr. Nostor here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 if the injury is in the hilar region, that means near the confluence, then uh, doing a colorectal will be a difficult procedure. And more so if the duct is not dilated, doing a colorectal is a very uh, uh, difficult procedure. It's not, it's, it's not a standard recommendation that undilated duct you do a colorectal You can do a colorectal That is acceptable. So let's see in the post period how the patient goes. Mm. Good morning, all. Uh, my... Yeah. Hello. Yes. Good morning, all. Uh, my concern is uh, a little bit different in this issue. Yes. Uh, just we have uh, seen few mortality and few morbidities here. But the common features is that the, all the patients are going, uh, they are having septicemia, septic shock. Uh, and the patient is dying. So we need to think uh, the procedure itself, the aseptic condition, the person who is doing or assisting. Which patient develops septicemia? We don't have such experience. No, no, no. Septic shock, septic shocks, they have already told those that. Are, those, those things are not happening because of... And even the second, uh, second morbid patients were discharged on the 25th day, uh, that patient also developed uh, more total count and... Uh, Septic findings. Oh. So they have an inherent cause of infection. That is why they are developing septic syndrome. Dr. Yeah. Siddharth, yes. And as such, it is not a usual that a lot of patients are developing septic shock. It's a particular patient who has septic focus. So along with this, uh, we need to think a different way. The patients we are intervening and uh, they are staying, average length of staying. And why are they staying? That to be explored. Okay. And if the causality is uh, found that the, some uh, uh, OT condition or any personal uh, protection or like that is the main uh, factor behind such uh, infections, then that can be triggered very easily. Sir, you can. Okay, okay, I'll try. Advise uh, Nehul, you, you mentioned one patient has mesh extraction, and in yes, the sir. same time you put a mesh again. Because no, sir. Uh, it, anatomical repair was done, sir. Part of the Please, mesh. In, in one patient in a morbidity mentioned that after mesh uh, extraction you do a repair, and then post op also you are seeing the mesh. Sir, post op, sir, part of the mesh was uh, left behind, sir. That was uh, oh, acting as a source uh, of sir, infection. Uh, if sir, if, the, if sir, the mesh is infected, you have to remove the whole mesh. That is most important. Otherwise, safety focus will stay. Yes, okay, sir, they, sir. because we are the patient who have a sinus, and this sinus mm -hmm. does not heal unless you take the uh, infect all the proline sutures, and the, even the proline mesh has to come out. Mm, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Sir, one more doubt I have. Sir, yeah. regarding liver abscess patient, uh, multiple liver assists and liver abscess with the riders. Did you do a CT scan? The CT scan was done, sir. It also showed, sir, uh, multiple uh, abs, uh, multiple uh, uh, calories. One, abs, uh, one of the abscess was ruptured, and this patient was, I think, elderly patient and unfit for. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Sir, sir, this patient, sir, when the patient was referred to us on uh, on the fourth day after the patient had already been admitted in the medicine ward, sir. By this time, the CT was done, and the there were two big, uh, there were multiple abscess cavities, sir. But the two major cavities, one was very posteriorly located on the right lobe, the other one was very anteriorly, superficially located, and the abscess had already ruptured. And when we saw the patient had already developed communication and cellulitis with the anterior abdominal wall. Yeah, so yeah. when we got the USG done, the radiologist told us that the cavity had already ruptured and there was no point of putting the pigtail at this point because it, it was already, most of it had drained out. So later, after shifting the patient to the ICU, we thought we, had, we will put a USG-guided drain inside 
uh, for safety and for if any other uh, drainage would be possible. But again, the radiologist told us that the anterior cavity had already drained out. And at this point in time, the maximum we could do was to support the patient with the uh, medical intervention to ensure that he recovers and then maybe a... Uh, no. Uh, sir, the patient was already on respiratory support by the time that the, the patient had come to us. Throughout the ward stay, he was an NRBM only, sir. Okay. Uh, Diptaman. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, good morning, sir. Uh, I am Dr. Diptaman Nandi. I am uh, going to present the audit for university surgery. Uh, good morning to my respected teachers, dear colleagues, and uh, juniors. Diptaman, can't see your screen. Yes. Is it visible now? Okay. Yeah, go to slide show. May I change the slide? Yes. Total OPD day is 9, total admission day is 10, OPD patients total 1096, new patients 786, old patients 310. Next slide, please. Total OPD day, uh, total number of elective uh, day, OT days nine. Total time in OT uh, lab table thirty two hours forty five minutes. Uh, open table thirty one hours twenty five minutes. Uh, number of minor OT days nine. Minor OT time total nineteen hours thirty five minutes. And emergency OT three hours. Total number of mortality one. Elective admission 52, emergency admission 11, elective operation 40, emergency operation 7, minor operation 39, mortality 1, morbidity 5. I want to mention one thing. We had two elective cases which I have uh, mistakenly mentioned in elective cases should be actually mentioned in emergency admission. That is one is about six-point volvulus and one uh, subjective intestinal obstruction, which will be discussed later. Next slide. In hepatic obiliary and pancreatic spelling surgery sections, chronic calculus cholecystitis cases were 13, which was managed with lab cholecystectomy. Open cholecystectomy was done in three cases one case of uh, repulse procedure and one case of biliary structure managed with a ruin one hepatic Next slide. Next slide. In the gastrointestinal and perianal sections, Chronic appendicitis, underwent appendicectomy lap and open two cases. Redundant uh, sigmoid colon with recurrent intestinal obstruction. This should be mentioned actually in emergency section, but I have mistakenly mentioned in elective cases. It was uh, managed with exploratory laparotomy followed by total colectomy with rectal anastomy. And the uh, second case also should be mentioned in emergency section. This is subacute intestinal obstruction with retro sigmoid growth, which was managed with laparotomy followed by LAR. Next slide. In the hernia and coin surgery section, uh, a case of ventral hernia managed with mesh hernioplasty, two cases of bilateral inguinal hernia managed with staff, unilateral hernia cases were six, which was managed with licensed mesh hernioplasty, two cases of unilateral inguinal hernia in a pediatric case, which was managed with laparoscopic herniotomy, one case of hydrocele managed with diversion of sac, and two cases of phimosis underwent circumcision. Some miscellaneous surgical sections, diamorphism behind right ear one, diamond of fibroma on abdominal wall, which underwent wide local excision followed by steel rafting. Another case of left, left inguinal lymphoma underwent exhibition and biopsy, and there was another case of left high SL which underwent exhibition. In emergency admission uh, sections, there was uh, two cases of peptic perforation underwent laparotomy. Three cases of acute calculus cholecystitis uh, underwent conservative management. One case of female uh, appendicectomy. Two cases of left to cellulitis with T2 DML HPN underwent conservative management. Two cases of diabetic food ulcer uh, underwent debridement and dressing. And one case of hematomine elect ulcer uh, underwent IMMD and input. Also, the two previous cases which I mentioned in elective section that is, one case of uh, subacute intestinal obstruction and another case of sigmoid volume. In the emergency operation, safety perforation was managed with laparotomy and Graham spike. Acute appendicitis underwent appendicectomy operation, anastomosis leakage. Actually, this patient was uh, given a second uh, intervention. This is the case of uh, that colectomy uh, with uh, sigmoid volvulus, which we we'll discuss in the morbidity section. This patient underwent re and lupuleostomy in the second intervention. 
two cases of diabetic foot ulcer underwent deep dive and dressing, and one case of hematoma in left axilla underwent INT. These are the minor operation sections done in our year OT and also our minor OT. This is some cases skip, of skip, uh, skip the minor, minor operations. Skip the skip minor operations. Go to the okay, next. Okay, sir. Now we are coming to uh, morbidity and uh, mortality sectors. There are five cases of morbidity and one case of mortality, which we will discuss now. Uh, in case of morbidity one, this was a case of 30-year-old female who underwent hepatic ejectostomy due to biliary picture. On PLD4, she developed surgical side infection. Otherwise, the patient was recovering well. Positivity management was given along with regular dressing. She was uh, she gradually recovered in the next seven to eight days and was discharged. In the, the second case of surgical side infection, a 48 years old male admitted with septic perforation underwent laparotomy on emergency basis with grand size repair. He was recovering, but on COD, he started developing wind side infection. Pass was sent for, uh, sent for microbiological invest investigations. Prospect of antibiotics and dressing continued till the arrival of CSP4. After this, the specific antibiotic was given along with other conservative management. Patient responded well to the treatment and finally discharged after eight days. In the third case, a 32-year-old male admitted with suspected subacute intestinal obstruction due to rectosigmoid growth underwent laparotomy with PLAR operation. Although otherwise post-operative recovery was good, but he developed a surgical site infection on POD4. However, with regular dressings and conservative management, his condition improved and was finally discharged. Another case of morbidity report, a 52 year gentleman admitted with diagnosis of obstructive jaundice due to periampulary carcinoma underwent treatment procedure. Post-operatively, the patient did well. On POD3, uh, drain amylase lipase was sent, which was 6,000 and uh, 15,000 respectively. Drain output was 100 ml, serosanguinate, which was later reduced to less than 50 ml, and drain amylase lipase also reduced simultaneously. On POD5, patient also had surgical side infection, past culture sensitivity was sent, and managed conservatively with regular aggression. This patient has uh, improved uh, now, and... Uh, uh, taking also uh, soft rice diet and patient uh, passing stool regularly. Okay, and we are planning to discharge uh, him. Okay. Okay. Another case of 48 year gentleman presented at ER with features of intestinal obstruction due to redundant uh, sigmoid colon. Patient was initially managed conservatively and obstruction was released. Patient has history of sigmoid volvulus nine months back for which he underwent exploratory lapotomy followed by colostomy and heart mass procedure. After two months, reversal was done after which the patient developed reductive sigmoid colon with retained intestinal obstruction, for which he underwent exploratory laparotomy followed by total colostomy with neorectal anastomosis. On POD2, patient developed fever and total count was 22,000. Brain output was around 100 ml serosanguina. On POD3, count reduced to 15,000 and subsequently 9,000. 9, patient developed discharge from the wound side on POD4. On POD5, patient taken for re laparotomy and loop uh, ileostomy was done. Into a small leak from the endotomy side at terminal, uh, yeah, patient is doing now and uh, patient is still admitted in our ward. We are giving conservative management, including fluids, CPN, and also we are giving oral liquids uh, and uh, patient is responding. Uh, his uh, stoma bag is also functioning and uh, we are planning for discharge as soon as possible. And this is a single case of mortality. It's actually, a 62-year-old male attended in emergency in late night on our on-call day with obstructive jaundice due to periampulary carcinoma. He was that time in severe septic shock. Probably he, he's also having cholangitis. He was immediately shifted to ward as ICU bed was not available at that moment. We are, however, we, he developed cardiac respiratory failure within two to three hours and succumbed in spite of her respiratory efforts. This is all. Uh, thanks to all. Dictaman, uh, uh, that patient uh, who underwent uh, uh, diversion stoma. Yes, sir. Uh, how was he diagnosed? That patient has the leak? Uh, sir, uh, what, was the, what, was the, what was the what was the what was the pointer for diagnosing that patient has a leak? Uh, sir, uh, uh, there was a uh, very much a discharge from the wound side. The uh, discharge was coming out. His abdomen was also becoming tense and distended. Before that, uh, 
we had a suspicion that patient might have leaked there are some you see you, you, you try to find out the markers for a anastomotic leak this patient has tachycardia this patient yes, has mild fever okay yes, and all these abdomen is initially soft subsequently he has some guarding in the lower abdomen so this patient has given some uh, warning that this there might be some anastomotic leak and in large gut keep in mind that in large gut even if there is a small leak there is no question of waiting he have to do a diversion often small gut leak may heal but a large mm -hmm. gut anastomotic which has healed, leaked these patient mm -hmm. go to very fast septicemia so one should do a uh, diversion as soon as possible okay okay Uh, any any comment from any other any comment from anyone else good morning sir yes vijay sir sir uh, surgical side wound infection cases are sir uh, more increase in our ward sir there is no other sir regular and proper dressing uh, were done sir uh if you mean surgical side infection has increased Sir, like many cases, uh, even sir, cold, cold cases, sir, uh, clean cases, uh, post-operative blood clots, sir, uh, wound infection. No, then you have to, you have to, you have to go back to the. You see, the the infection is a multifactorial. One is host, second is environment. So you have to first see the our surgical techniques, whether there is some. Uh, problem with the technique or not, and second is you have to enter the OT system. You have to tell the OT system there is some increase in this incidence, so she must check whether the autoclaving is done properly. Because you see here the autoclaving all being done by technical person, no system goes there. So yes, one sir. has to check whether you are getting adequate uh, sterile instruments, the theatre environment, whether the uh, do they send culture uh, swab from the OT? Just enter one from the system. Whether they send regular uh, uh, swab from the OT, uh, because if the incidence is getting higher, you have to address that issue. This too, Dr. Kaur was also saying that uh, the, a lot of patients are developing sepsis and septic shock. Sir, if, even even the, actually, uh, patients the are uh, post postoperative uh, recovery is quite good. Uh, they are leaving behind the surgical side infection. But the surgical side infections are causing uh, some problems. Otherwise, operative technique related problem is not much. Um, but this infection needs to be addressed. Nee, dago. Dictaman patient who has leaked will have infection. That is uh, that is not an issue. But point is for a clean surgery, for clean surgery like hernias, like gallbladder, uh, in those cases you have higher infection. You have to review our uh, the setup mm. whether something is wrong in the setup or not. Mm. Okay. Uh, sir, good morning, sir. Good morning. Yes. So, sir, sir, who are who are having sepsis, sir? Uh, that uh, as in as I was pointing out, sir, the prolonged stay in the ICU, sir. We do not see that they are having. Uh, mostly, they respond well to our care in the wards. And the counts have reduced. Even patients with who come with gross cellulitis, uh, sir, even their counts reduce quite well, sir. But usually, if, sir, the the patients that we have seen who have had prolonged stay, even then, even th when they are managed in the ward, sir, the we are able to get the counts under control and the overall clinical condition becomes well, sir. We you see, you see, always, see, sir, always sir, mostly the patients see. which who are there in the ICU, sir. You see. Yeah, yeah. The ICU bag are different. You understand? The ICU they use high antibiotics. The ICU uh, uh, bags are very yes, resistant sir. bags. So it's true that uh, it's one of the uh, important factor. The long ICU stays actually even with the mortality. Okay, so not only infection. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. That's why I always try that. So long patient yes, requires monitoring. Keep there up to that part. Beyond that, patient should be treated in the ward only. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.
क्वेश्चन Uh, because the secondary infection rate is high, so we need to explore the rate of secondary infections here first. Second, the length of staying of the patient after operations that is also high. Uh, though uh, we are performing excellent uh, uh, surgeries in our unit uh, in in this hospital, that is very much enthusiastic for the other hospital also, and we are performing uh, more number of surgeries uh, in compared to other medical colleges also. But uh, the quality of sur uh, surgery is now questionable because of developing such uh, post-operative infections on fifth or sixth day onwards. So that that why I uh, suggested to explore uh, why is the fault. Uh, that was my concern only because all the technicality is yes, what I, you are I, performing I, and you uh, and our team is performing uh, that is excellent. Uh, I definitely applaud them. <clears throat> but uh, we need to focus the quality of the uh, aseptic procedures aseptic conditions everything because uh, for the in the in the ot that is the periodic sterilization report swab are sent uh, to the uh, ss came and we are getting the uh, no growth report so ot is okay now the uh, surgeons or assistants who are doing the surgeries they need to focus on that Uh, agree sir your, your point is well taken your point is well taken uh, actually uh, we will be doing a specific uh, audit this is a general audit yes, we will be sir. doing a specific infection audit in yes, in bangu so hmm. that in last two or three months you can review what surgery you have done and how many incidents of infection what are the patterns of the infection and if if something you see the the idea whole idea of audit is to analyze what we are doing Where we are going wrong, and whether we can rectify ourselves. And what can so that is the whole this? idea of the audit. But, but but the problem is I I could not find all the bed in charge of MR Bangalore yes, to join this meeting. Yes, although although it is their cases which is being discussed. And you see one case I discussed that the procedure that we have done should have been different. So this should be learning even for the uh, uh, senior residents also. But very mm -hmm. unfortunate that all bed in charge are not finding yes. time. to join this meeting in spite of my sending them all the links everything uh, when superintendent sir can join i hope uh, the bed in charge also can join this meeting because this is a practice changing session where we discuss our activities we discuss our failures and we find some ways whether we can make little better yes and one more thing i want to add Uh, after sending the patient to the critical care unit, uh, we need not uh, we need not uh, entire uh, what I would say that is a uh, the medical officer on the CC they are doing their uh, uh, administering high uh, do, uh, end of the. antibiotics high and higher antibiotics but does it require that to be examined by the bics or the concerned surgeon uh, exactly, and the treatment that, treatment that, protocol the only surgeon can uh, intervene the ccu medical officer only perform the criticality whether the patient need the critical support but the treatment modalities will completely be ensured by the operating surgeon or the or his assistants uh, whoever may be sir you are very right sir uh, that that is the point i want to make out all the time when a surgical patient goes to icu it is not hmm. that icu person who will do a sole management of the patient that exactly. has to keep a constant vigil regarding any post op complication that is coming up a icu uh, physician cannot diagnose post op complication that is exactly. the duty of the surgeon to diagnose Exactly. and and exactly. there should be rationale in giving antibiotics uh, i find uh, uh, not only antibiotics the parenteral nutrition the inotrophs are used little more in situ because they are accustomed to use it 
But point is, you have to keep in mind that patient who is in CCU in a post op phase is a joint responsibility of the bed in charge as surgeon and the CCU. As well as the CCU medical, medical officer, yes. Uh, yeah, but, uh, sir, yes. I want to. Yes. Uh, it cannot be left only to CCU specialist. Yes. Uh, sir, I want to say one thing. Uh, sir, can more sterilization? Procedures can be done in our internal work where patients are kept, uh, if possible, fumigations or more attractive. Uh, this. So, Ditaman, uh, you first, Ditaman, 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 what I'm trying to say is you first do infection audit. If you find our infection is alarming, then you have to think. If you have, see, you see, you are operating on a patient with septic peritonitis, that patient is likely to develop infection. You are exactly. operating with a patient with infected mesh, he is likely to develop infection. Exactly. So, if my concern is, I find I'm doing lab cholecystectomy and I have a 50% infection, I'm concerned. I have to stop my work and review. It's not that. I do not find the incidence is very high. So, point is, whatever infection is there, we have to curtail that also. We, we want zero infection. But exactly. you should also keep in mind the number of patients and the type of patients that are coming up. Just don't blame the environment. First, blame ourselves. If you blame the environment, uh, you, you are always uh, at, at a point that you may not rectify yourself. So first, no, see no, what no, we no, can I, do. No, no, I'm not blaming the environment. We the no, no, we we said, uh, our ward has to be sterilized. What is sterilized? You see no. what you are doing. You, you, you can't sterilize what? the whole world because it's not possible. There are so many patients coming outside the uh, 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 different corner of the uh, city and uh, the patient parties are uh, moving uh, to and fro. The staffs are there. So it's not possible to sterilize all the world. But you can concentrate on the bed where the patient is. Where you can concentrate on the OT table where the patient is. You can concentrate on yourself while op uh, operating the patients, uh, the assistants, everyone. So we can do uh, in this way. Just think differently. I am just uh, suggesting you all. Uh, just we need to think different. Why uh, the MR Bangur will uh, have the large number of the infection, post-operative infection? So infection audit, what actually pointed out you, sir, that is very important. And infection audit we can do patient-wise or unit-wise. Yes, sir. You will do, sir. You will do as a whole, in the whole surgical unit. Yes, sir. Sir, I would request you to please... Uh... Ask other bed in charge so that they at least join the audit meeting. I am not expecting them. Uh, I, I have meeting. already. I have already. I have already to ask them, requested them uh, to remain present. But uh, okay, I will again talk to them. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you all. Thanks. Thank you.